I have some people practicing over here as well. <laughs> so there is like a life class and uh, as well a physical life class. Um, let's get in a very nice seated position. Okay. Legs crossed. You can always choose to just stay crossed in a normal position. Maybe apply a half lotus, which would be to bring one leg upon, or even a little bit more intense. That depends on where you are in your practice. To go to a lotus. Whatever allows you to keep your hands on top of your knees, really relax your arms and let the shoulders hang down. Starting by closing your eyes. And for now, connect with the present moment through your posture. So just the day is still starting and new. Maybe there are not too many impressions yet from the lived moments. But maybe this class gives you the opportunity to awaken once more and to start your day in a more conscious way with yourself, feeling your body. So whatever it is you hear, you might hear around you, noises, neighbors, roommates, just let it all happen and more and more bring all attention within yourself, focusing more on your breathing and feel how you're rooting down more and more. So your shoulders are starting to hang down heavily, your knees are getting relaxed more and more and feel how the roots are even getting stronger just at all points of connection on your mat. So it's this very earth element, that massive element that tears you down, connects you with gravity, with your inner silence. Feel your exhalation, especially in there, how you fall deeper. And as if you from there start arising through your inhalations, where you start expanding your neck and your entire back. So your co spinal cord is starting to get more stretched. Each vertebra gets more space in between. Just dive deeper into that feeling of being really relaxed, free of any tensions. Just let it go. But as well, that moment of inhalation, of activating your chest, your lungs, and for creating some more space within yourself. You might want to lean back a little bit more to feel how this very power line goes through your entire back and lands on the mat. How there's a little bit more of pressure on the floor. So your shoulders are even getting more heavy. Your neck is spreading and extending up a little bit more. And your breathing more and more gets slowlier and deeper. As if your own body would be a wave. And you let your rhythm just happen, deepening it. So if there is any dedication or any special motive that is behind of the practice for today. You can just bring it to your conscious. Or maybe simple, simply promise yourself to practice in order to get to know yourself better, to get over some obstacles maybe, or to find some answers to some questions. From there, let's bring our palms together to the center of our chest and start today's practice in the most humble way. Take a deep inhale and exhale, simply incline your head into the front. Let your shoulder blades be heavy and relaxed. Exhale here and slowly release your hands back on top of your knees. Opening your eyes, little by little, that's it. Good morning once more. And we're starting. So we sit, we are still sitting in a cross leg position. 
and we're just trying to get some we did it last time actually as well I would just like to deepen in here each time when you inhale try to push your chest a little bit more forward and in your exhalation your belly just goes in your upper back is rounding and then you go forward as well simpler it would be to just think about your navel your belly making horizontal circles like just making circles and maybe for today it's just that or you can incorporate a little bit more movement through the entire spine including your shoulder blades even your shoulders your neck and your head it's all about circles and try to find harmony with your breathing when you exhale you just fall back and when you inhale you just opening up so your knees are still heavy and the entire activation just happens in your torso and maybe you change sides falling back and there's always one side that is smoother and one side that feels a little bit more stiff just connect with it maybe even you feel some vertebras in my case it's definitely happening and the next time when you exhale just let your entire back fall back your chin goes to the chest straightening your arms and feel that you're really pulling your knees so it's kind of a balanced position in your next inhale pull yourself forwards and start with really opening your chest into the front and up shoulder blades getting together and maybe the whole head is dropping back both hands going forward take another deep inhale pull the floor lengthening your spine and exhale enter so you still are sitting back so there is no um, buttocks lifting okay stay there for a little bit more if you want to start more relaxed you can bring your arms down or you can start activating more by just pointing the fingertips on the floor and lifting your elbows from there inhaling come back up and find your table pose okay so your knees are just under your hips your hands are under your shoulders and once more we're staying here in your next exhalation just try to bring your right hip forward and to look back to your right hip through the right side the, head, the, the whole back is staying straight always when you inhale you come back forward and exhale just change sides let's try it a couple of times more and next time when you reach forward exhale and just pull your navel up as much as you can connect with pushing into the floor and inhale open up your chest into the front activating all muscles in your back and let's combine both movements together you're starting look to look over your right shoulder to your hip which is also moving and then rounding your back twisting over the other side inhaling so it's a little bit more tricky movement but now the spinal cord is moving entirely so again you can just let it be about that or you can start moving as well a little bit more in your arms feeling more your head and just smoothening your body it's always good to be smooth before really getting engaged again and maybe change sides might be a different experience here always when you exhale you push your your back up and inhaling you open and next time when you exhale just stay here and inhale find your neutral position so from here we're starting engaging a little more your right hand goes forward and try to find the left leg just the opposite leg staying straight so we're not collapsing in the back just imagine your hand is in the same height as your heel and exhaling pull the heel uh, the, the the elbow with the knee as high as you can inhale once more try to be as long as possible straightening forward and backwards exhale one more time and inhale this time we want to go as high as possible 
super 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 and now maybe you bend your arm and your knee and we go sideways three stay here two feeling your back one very nice and exhale we're changing sides inhale left arm reject the floor and straightening first of all straight and exhale elbow and knee goes together and pull it up so really engage your upper back inhale stay straight and just lengthening in both sides exhale one more time push into the floor and inhale open up as much as you can super and exhale from here bending both arm and knee to find the side so you feel you start to feel the weight of your hip two one and exhale super take a deep inhale one more time to look up and Push your weight back into your first Adho Mukha, downward facing dog. We stay here for some couple of breathings, just to connect with that first posture. So you want to try to push your weight back towards your knees and towards your feet. And really straighten, pushing through your arms. The hip wants to be as high as possible, so if, it's, if you feel like you're rounding, Bend your knees, bring them towards your ribs and really push back. So work on this lengthening of the spine. Slowly we walk towards our hands. Take a deep inhale. First just to make like that body scan of straightening your legs as much as you can now. Bring your arms as high as possible in order to have your back straight. And exhale one more time, bend down. Inhale, we're rolling up, bending your knees. Take a deep inhale, vertebra by vertebra. Until you come to standing, Samastidihi. Really nice. So we're starting with our first sun salute in your next inhalation. Take a deep inhale for Urdhva Hastasana and exhale, bend down, Uttanasana. Inhale, lengthening the spine. And exhale, step or jump. For this time you can just choose. Take the same exhale until the floor. And inhale, maybe you pull in your, your neck, your, your chin, which is the last that comes up in your inhale. Exhale, Adho Mukha. For this time we stay here in the classic position again, just to reconnect a little more with the, the adjustments. So your fingers are spread, your arms are straight, and your back is engaged. Try to get any curve out of your back. So you want to really push your shoulders down, far away from your hands. You can bend one knee and then the other. And still there's no pressure to have your, your heels down on the floor. You can just keep them lifted a little if it helps you to, stre to stretch more your back. In your next exhalation, bend your knees, step or jump in between your hands. Opening up, straightening back, arms and legs. Exhale, bend down. Inhale, come all the way up. Stretching and exhale, we go directly down to the floor. Inhale, opening. This time maybe you choose to jump with a good connection on the floor. Chaturanga, until the floor, exhaling. Inhale, tuck your chin and bring it up at last, shoulder blades together and maybe you just push into your wrists to lift your heels, uh, your knees, <laughs> exhale, Adho Mukha. So we are getting in our first variation. Today I would like to dedicate a little bit more our concentration as well in order to apply strength. So we are shortening the distance a little bit. Okay, and bring your feet together. So from here, the right arm looks for the right heel in the back. Maybe for today it's all you do. So you can keep push pulling that heel to increase that flex in your shoulder or you can start to bring all weight on top of the right side and bring your left leg up. Still pushing into your downward facing dog so your left arm in front is really engaged pushing down it's all about taking yourself to time and feeling your lines. You come back the same way you came up. Inhale, come back to your downward and exhale. Come to the other side. For now, maybe you stay. 
bending over or you want to fly a little more feeling more the thriving concentration in bringing that leg up so a nice tip is to really keep straight your left leg and your left arm as long as you have line here you can push into them and exhale slowly find your way down inhale downward facing take an exhale bend your knees step or jump in between your hands opening up and exhale come back all the way up inhale and exhale we go again directly down inhale lengthen exhale nice connection with the floor step or jump plank pose inhale open push into the floor bring it high and exhale Adho Mukha so from here we go into a nice twist again we're shortening the distance a little bit and we start with our right hand towards the left heel so from here you can either stay again here pulling that heel in order to twist over and maybe look through your left axle towards the ceiling if that still feels very comfortable and controlled you can try again to bring your weight on top of the left leg bending your knee into your right axle or even straightening up always remember it's still a downward facing dog you want to push into that floor with your left forward hand two one slowly it's all about the way you come down to really fix that concentration and control of your movements and in your next exhalation change sides first make that nice twist at this side if you did it on the other side lean over find your concentration first bend your knee into the left axle if the line is still there work on straightening keeping the shape of your downward feel your back how it still is extended in a nice small twist and slowly come back down all the way back take a deep inhale here exhale bend your knees step or jump in between your hands inhale open and exhale we come all the way back up inhale Urdhva Hastasana exhale Samasthiti bring your both hands towards the sides of your body maybe close your eyes for some minutes seconds Feel the balance on top of your foot and re-engage to your line so you feel your knees strong, you feel your legs really strong, feel your belly like pulling in and especially your lower back in order to stick out your butt just to the opposite. Exactly, it's about the pelvis to really let it pull down. We're starting with our second sun salute. In your next inhalation, Utkatasana, bend down, keep the weight on your heels, lift up and exhale, come deeper. Inhale, come forward, and all of you who want to do more strength for today, really try before jumping back, leaning all the weight you have on top of your hands. So you want to have maybe just the big toes on the floor before jumping back. Inhale, open. Exhale, Adho Mukha. Inhale, right leg goes in between your hands. Just bring the, the heel on the back to the floor. Draw that line up. Just stay here, reconnect with your Veera Vadrasana, the warrior. And slowly, with a very straight leg behind, bring your heel up. Take an inhale and exhale. Open your fingers, twist over your right shoulder. Stay just upon, on top of your hips with the entire body back. Just the other side. So try to look over your right arm, you can bend your knee a little more, good, exhale with the same concentration, just bring that knee down, maybe you stay here for today or you have enough control to look for your heel behind and opening a little more, it's really about concentration here, so wherever you are, work on lifting your chest, you don't want to just collapse back, super nice. Slowly come back forward, both hands to the floor, to the inside of your right leg. And in your next inhale, push that right knee as far as you can from you. 
using it to twist over. So again, you want to look back. Either you stay here or you grab the leg in the back. In the back. When that bind is really comfortable, you can start in strengthening that leg away from you and twist over. Come back forward in your inhale and two options here. You can just step back duk, in your chaturanga or you can use a nice small kundinyasana before coming into your adumuka. And from here we just controlling our breath and inhale, left leg goes in between your hands, find your warrior, draw that line really comfortably and controlled, hips are squared, take another inhale, come back up and exhale, twist over your left shoulder this time. So you want to create space in between your shoulder blades and really pull, push your hands far from you. Palms are looking towards the, the walls. Two, one, keep your gaze steady and exhale, slowly come down. You stay here maybe or you look for the heel behind. Either you stay here or you give it a little bit more intensity by bending your front knee a little bit more. Take the control to inhale, come back up, both hands into the front, sink in with that hip a little more and from there in your next inhale push that left knee away from you and use it for twisting over. So again you want to look over your left shoulder here. Again if you chose to apply some variation you can go for it or you just stay where you are. Three, two, one. Left, le left hand goes into the front again Choose your variation, come through a kundinyasana or just stepping back into your Adho Mukha. So we might be at a point where some of you are really exhausted, so just don't hesitate to come down to Badasana whenever you need. Although we are continuing, you can always reincorporate your practice. And if you're still with me, in your next exhalation, bend your knees, step or jump in front. Take another inhale, open up and exhale. We're bending our knees, Utkatasana, this time interlace your fingers and stay here. Once again, shift your weight on top of your heels, a little bit more back. You have a really, really flat lower back especially. Push your hands far from your face. And exhale, go into Ardha Utkatasana, looking down to the floor, straightening your elbows. It's like the ski jumpers. Three, two, feel your legs burning. One, exhale, interlace your fingers in the back. Inhale, use it to open your chest, bring your shoulder blades together and straighten your arms. And exhale, bend over. At last, you're straightening, you're straightening your legs. <clears throat> And hang in there for some moments. So it's about, you can either just keep your fingers interlaced or even bring your wrists together, which is a little more intense for your shoulders. Look down to the floor and if you feel that line in your legs, which are straight and engaged, just push your weight a little more, more into the front to maybe bring your heels high. Opening the bind in your hands, use your arms as wings. as tool for your balance. So you want to bring your chin as low as possible, but in the same time you want to push up your hips as high as possible. Feel an effect of extension in your entire torso. Two, one, exhale, both hands go down. It's the moment of any kind of inversion you're practicing right now. So it can be a simple bakasana. If you're still trying on doing or working out a bakasana, you can either bring your head down to the floor, make a triangle with your hands, which have to be more behind your head, and step on your elbows. Okay? If you feel comfortable from there, just feel that connection with your knees. It will help you more ahead to work with more weight on your arms. And if not, 
your bakasana if you're already there try to keep five breathings or go anywhere else you would like to go two and one wherever you are as you step jump back into your vinyasa take a deep inhale and exhale in your next inhalation, right leg goes in between your hands. Come up into the warrior. Interlace your fingers and push far from you. Feel your hips. Feel pushing from your back, back leg. Two. Very nice. One. In your next exhalation, interlace your fingers in the back. Take a deep inhale and exhale, fold forward, pushing with your leg behind into your warrior three. So you want to lengthen your spine, including your neck, finding your line, and that entire concentration with your gaze towards the floor. Two, one, open up your hands where you are and shift your weight back to standing, keep that leg up, bend your knee in front, Maybe you grab your knee and push it towards you, strengthening your back. Two. Very good. One. From there, we go back down. Shift your weight into your warrior three. Bring your right arm to the floor and twist or open up through your left hip into your hoops, into your warrior three, uh, into your Ardha Chandrasana. Align your shoulders, there's, this less, there's less weight possible on your right hand on the floor. Two, one, slowly bend your, your front knee and land in your warrior two. Align both of your arms, shoulders are heavy, but your legs are super engaged and strong. Two, one, both hands come up. We're getting a little bit more core strength here. Try to freeze wherever you are at with your legs. Your hips are opened and in your exhale, bend over diagonal and let's stay here. Whenever you collapse, you can um, support yourself with your right elbow. Three, two, very good. One, and where you are, either you grab your big toe or you slide your hand wherever you need to have it. By, um, by straightening both legs into your Utita Tri Konasana. Three, two, one, to make that very nice test for your Utita Tri Konasana, try to release that hand on the, on the floor and come up, keeping both legs straight. So that's actually the power we want to apply for that posture. In your exhalation, shorten your distance. Take a deep inhale, twist over your hips, open up and exhale. Find your Parigrita Ardha Chandrasana, the twist. Again, you push up. This time, you really want to connect with the floor and your left arm, so push into it in order to have both shoulders aligned. Both legs stay straight. Three, two, pushing back a little more your head. One. Super. Exhale, look down and just slide your hand a little more in front, left, left, left hand, to find your flight in Paribrita Ardha Chandrasana. Three, two, one. Now comes something very juicy, okay? <laughs> so you start bending your right leg and twisting your left leg towards the right side, okay? So whoever of you might be able to make a bind to grab your leg, start straightening it and come to sit, okay? If not, you can do it manually by just finding whoops, that leg to the right side and support yourself here with your hands until you sit. So I make it into your direction. Mm -hmm. Right leg is over the left. Mm -hmm. And we're still looking forward, okay? So this time, bring your hands into the front, nicely opened, and exhale, first of all, bend over. So you can have like those hands like a cactus, mm -hmm. and try to straighten up 
opening up your chest. Engage through your left foot. Whenever you feel you can do it, find the bind again with your hand and lay down. Two. One. Inhale, come back up. We stay here and just find our left hand a little bit more behind us, just on bottom of your, of your hand. And take an inhale, push into your straight left leg to open up. Deep inhale. Super, super nice. And exhale, twist both hands in front of your mat. Find either just simple step back or again, a vinyasa through kundinyasana. Mm. Okay. <laughs> and since it's rocket today, we're going into our pincha mayurasana. So if you need a wall or whatever else that might support you, if you have somebody to help you, as well, perfect. Um, if you're not familiar with um, Pincha Mayurasana, you can always try uh, connecting through it with a, with a dolphin. It's another animal. <laughs> so the dolphin is simply about all about a downward facing dog, but bringing your elbows down. So you stay high with your hips because you want to give it all weight on top of your elbows. Maybe for today it's, that's all, or you want to go deeper and finding this nice shift. Okay, if you're familiar with the pincha, align your entire weight on top of your elbows and maybe stay here for seven breathings. So it's a little bit of auto practice. Each of you just goes in his or her own rhythm and then take some breathings to stay in balasana. Now it's the moment to relax. <laughs> stay breathing wherever you are. Okay, so if you're finished, you can choose. You stay maybe just breathing and listening to my nice voice. <laughs> or you straightening forward your arms and come back into your downward facing. If you're one of the very active people, find your chaturanga and come back to your downward after. We're getting into our left side of rocket. So inhale, your left leg goes forward. Find your warrior interlacing your fingers. First of all, connect with that posture. Three, bending nicely through your left forward knee. Two, one, exhale. Interlace your fingers in the back. Take a deep inhale, opening up and exhale. Get ready to shift your weight, find your lines and the calm concentration through breathment, breathing. Align your heel in the back with your front shoulder. Find a nice, very long back. Super. Two. One. Slowly inhale. Come back up and shift your leg in front. Find the bind in your knee and bring it towards you. So you want to push it into your, into your upper body. That's it. Bring your shoulder blades together. And one more time, loose. And with that whole concentration of your standing leg, shifting your exhalation back to your warrior three. Find one more time that alignment with the floor. Your extension through your heel behind. And exhale, bring your left hand down. Inhale, twist over, open your right hip. And find that line. At last you would look up. <coughs> Two. Good. One. Bending your knee and stepping far back to find your warrior two. Again, we'll relax shoulders. Belly goes in, so we want to avoid any arching in our lower back. Two. One. From here, inhale, bring both arms up. Let's get some center burning. And exhale, shift over diagonally. Really try to push into that left arm and stay here for three. Two, bend nicely that front leg. One, good, and exhale, find either your toe or swipe up or sw mm. yeah, slide up your hand wherever you need it to have both legs straight now. Push up, and remember that feeling of you actually want to come up without doing it. So that's the, the intention of that posture. There's no weight on your lower arm. Looking up, creating space between your shoulder blades. Two. 
One, and now try to come up really nicely and controlled. Super. And exhale. Shorten your distance, twist over. Take a deep inhale, right arm goes up and exhale. Come into your Parigrita Ardha Chandrasana. Again, this time it's the moment of pushing into the floor, aligning both shoulders, feel as if it would be a line. Or a table, a leg of a table. Both legs straight. Two. One. Super, super nice. And from here we're just repeating another side. We're going to bring that leg up. And this time just shift that left leg to the, the, the right leg to the left side. Either already making the bind, like I have no space right now, <laughs> but from here just come whoops, to sit. Good. So if you're here, da, 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 da. take a deep inhale, open, and exhale, bend down. Good. If you're comfortable here, both arms are really opened, so you feel more this effect in your shoulder blades. You can try to find that bind. The foot is always active and bend deeper. So that knee that is standing, you want to have connection with your entire foot palm on the floor, pushing the knee back, okay? So feel it in your hips. Mm -hmm. Inhale, come back up. Replace your right hand below your shoulder, straightening through your right foot and push it up in your inhalation. So down, twist over and come into your Vinyasa Chaturanga into your second um, second practice of Pincha Mayurasana. Okay, so I will leave it here for two seconds, two minutes, <laughs> so all of you can get some flight um, and some maybe just repeat the dolphin for today, or you can really go into pushing up one leg this time, changing it with the other, or staying there for a little more breaths. Really good. So, are you back? Hmm. <laughs> really nice. So, maybe just relax in your balasana, but already getting prepared for... I really love this, this exercise because you have your, your body reconnected, especially your spinal cord. Your heels are open, hip width apart. Just grab your heels and in your next inhalation, roll up like a snake. And at last, you push your hips into the front and up. Let your head fall down. And the first thing you do from here, when you initiating your exhalation, try to sit back. Increase your, your curve in your back and at last you start rounding that back again. And one more time, come up. Last thing that opens is your chin by falling back. And one more time, exhale. Coming to the front. So from here, we're pretty much in a nice position to come up and shift our weight on top of your heels. Okay, so we just do it one more time. Bring your heels up and sit down. One more time up and sit down. And from here, we're placing both hands onto the floor and come up. So we're just, we're doing two, two parts. Don't get afraid or scared or <laughs> whatever. You can join in. There are many different steps of practicing that. Or you just sit and have a, have a look. We have a second round, which is slightly different. So you push your hands into the floor. If you're not really getting to the floor, you can still use some blocks so you're already higher. The idea is that you feel the pressure on the floor by shifting your entire weight on it. You can also, it depends on, on, on each body, Put your blocks below your feet so you're already higher with your hips and shift them over to your hands. And maybe you just, without touching the floor, slide in between your hands. So try to do that until you come in front of your mat. So there are different steps. You can practice that with first trying it with just one leg. That would be the shifting part, you keep it straight, but the foot is really flex and you want to bring it as high as possible to your forearm before stepping. Okay, so from here we're just sliding, if you have that engagement already understood. The other part would be 
to shift your legs out before. And then you step, okay? Why are we doing this? Because we, have, we want to have more conscious in our hands, especially in our fingers. So this is why the second part of that practice comes now. We really want to be in control of our upper body. <clears throat> so it's more dynamic now. Simply or literally, we are starting to jump into our Bakasana. You know Bakasana already? You know the pressure on your hands already? So if you have your hands far away from you, it's pretty much a downward facing dog. And you want to prepare to bend your knees, jump up, and stop here, okay? So there are different ways of literally training it. If you have it, just do it and try to bring your hips each time higher and higher. So you want to even pass by almost a handstand and find your bakasana, okay? But you can simply start with just making some frog jumps, okay? So it's da 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 and from the outside, okay? So if you feel that you have that control on your hands to slow down this inertia of coming forward, that's the moment when you're ready to really try to land with your knees on top of bent elbows, slightly bent elbows, okay? So when you reach the front, let's relax in some moments of Malasana. So here we are having different levels again. You can just stay in Malasana. I'm going to twist into your side. If you're here, just reconnect with your breathing. If you feel really ooh, pumping blood, bring it down <laughs> to a nice relaxation. If you feel, oh, I could go more, try to make a bind with your, left arm, with your left knee. So the left arm goes to the back and the right arm is looking for the left wrist. Looking up. So maybe it's a delicious, nice twist you can stay in or if it's still not enough and you want to give it a little bit more flight, uh, try to bring that whole weight on top of your left leg, trying to find your line again and stand up. So it's a flying malasana, which is important to find first of all this really nice pushing line into your left leg. And always remember, the same way you come up, take it, give it the same time to slide down and maybe find your step without having to do any more adjustments. So it's just the most simple movements you can do from entering and exiting. Your posture is perfect. And from here, come back to Malasana. Inhale, exhale, change sides. Just choose, stay here or give it some more challenge. So it's all about, first step is really difficult because you want to find to slide up that left leg alongside your standing leg, okay? So this makes it easier for you to find that gravity concentration. And whenever you're up, try to open your chest so you're really opening. You're standing straight, pushing your knee backwards. And slowly slide. And step. Good, super. So we are starting to roll up from here. Letting your head fall, take a deep inhale, bring your hips high and feel each vertebra now moving, getting back into standing position. Even feeling when you pull up your chin, <laughs> come to standing and bring your toes up, your heels. One more time, find that space. We have been contracting a lot our center right now. This is the moment to re-expand everything. Feel that lungs opened. Let's give it a little bit more of um, balancing challenge. Take a deep inhale to grow a little more. Forget about gravity. Close your eyes and let's stay with high heels. Three, two, feel your legs engaged. One and exhale, open up your leg. Mm -hmm. Super. So both feet are parallel to each other. Take a deep inhale, open and exhale, lower down. Both legs stay straight. Inhale, lengthen your spine and exhale. For all of you who know handstands, who are handstands addicted, 
Um, this is the moment when we apply our push-up. So it's the same principle. You want to push up your na navel and bring your heels far from the floor and maybe stay with your big toes here. Push into the floor, find connection with your arms or find it, find a nice flat. So whenever you're still, if you're still on the floor, try and feeling that navel engaging in until it burns, it burns, it burns, it burns. Stay high, 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 high. Exhale, bring your knees down, slide your hands in line with your feet. Another inhale to open up chest and exhale, bend over. So your elbows stay together when they're bent. You just bend back in line with your feet. If you feel for it and if you have conscious about it and control it nicely, bring your head down if it's easy and push slightly into your hands to come into a standing Mukta Hasta Shivshasana to just bring that bloodstream into an opposite direction. Find alignment here. And if you stay down, work on straightening your legs a little more and bringing that back really down. For all of you, if you're up, take your own rhythm. For all of us who are down, inhale, lengthening your spine forward, exhale, both hands to the floor. Inhale, come up. Exhale, interlace your fingers. We're going to see. Deep inhale, straightening your arms and exhale, lower down. Again, it applies that you choose if you want to bring your wrists together for more intensity in your shoulders or you just interlace your fingers normally. Two. One. Inhale, come halfway up. Let's stay halfway. Both hands straightening forward. Look down to the floor. Stay here. Three. Two. One. Right arm goes just into the center below your face. Inhale, push into that arm and open up. Find your line. Three, two, one. That upper arm goes through the right side to grab the right heel and inhale again. This time you just give space for that right arm to go as much as you can back. Open your chest. Two, one, and exhale, both hands down. We change sides, this time left arm just beneath your face. So if you see it from here, there's a difference if you just push like this. So you're supporting yourself too much. You want to grow, you want to really open space. You want to have your neck not lying on your shoulder. And inhale, open up. So keep pushing up that energy. So you want to straight, straight, <laughs> strengthen and expanding Two. One, exhale, find your twist, find either your shin or your, your heels, and inhale. So feel the navel area, how it's starting to twist more, you can help yourself with it. Two, one, come back, inhaling. One more time, open, super nice, and exhale. We are going to lower our legs. It's the most emotional position we have, for, in my opinion. So you want to stay in connection with your foot on the floor. If it's too easy, you can bring your elbows down. Keep lowering. Two. Legs are straight. And in, in terms of opening, stay focused forward. So you don't want to just bring your head down. You want to push it forward. Lengthen your spine still. Super nice. And from here, come back up. Twist over your right leg. <laughs> We're starting to prepare for some um, Hanumanasana, okay? So first, hang in here. Try to sit just on top of your hips. So you're neither in front, neither in the back. You can use your blocks if you have to, or if you can hold it, okay. So you can always try to open more. Let's get that try. In your next exhalation, just slightly support yourself and come to sit on your back heel. So the front heel is sliding back with you, but keep the leg straight. Take an inhale here and exhale, fold down. 
just where you are in your next inhalation, shift your weight back forward so your foot touches the floor and inhale, open up. Exhale, we go down with our hands and one more time sit back. This is the moment when each of you chooses where to go. You can go to your direct Hanumanasana, open up if you feel for it, or you can stay here using your blocks, having that straight leg, trying to have your upper body just on top of your, um, of your hips and using that blocks to support yourself as much as you need and from there sliding. Okay, it's important that we're not forward but because that breaks our knee. So we want to have all the weight on our hips. Mm -hmm. If you're in Hanumanasana, just breathe and try to find comfort here. Another um, um, adjustment that I always like to do is left arm goes up here and looks for the right outside part of my front foot. So if you're still comfortable here, you can look for your right arm outside area of your back leg. So that squares your hips more, it helps at least. And even you could look down, look back. Two, one. From here, both hands on the floor. You can shift your weight directly back into a downward facing. There's something I'm on, but with this mat it's almost impossible for all handstanders. Try, maybe using your blocks, pushing into the floor, using that line, getting rid of all the weight on your feet and find another flight, okay? So if you have a sticky mat, <laughs> it's getting to be a tricky, tricky exercise. Okay, and if you're in downward facing dog, you're bringing in front your left leg. <clears throat> okay, and come to install yourself on top of it. So first, just hang in here. Work on opening. Two, one, upper body is just straight and vertical. Take now your fingertips to the floor, sit back, work on activating that left leg and sit back to your heel. Inhale here, lengthening and exhale, come down. Feel that effect, that result in your quadriceps. Take an inhale, shift your weight forward and find that light feeling by bringing up your hands, focusing on top, focusing up with your energy. Exhale one more time, come down. And from here, inhale, take it to wherever you did it in the other side, maybe just shifting your weight into your Hanumanasana, always working on bringing your upper back back or using your blocks, keeping that leg straight and shifting with your blocks. We start to open our legs nice and comfortably. If you're rocket people, you might know a way how to get in it smoothly. Both fingertips on the floor, shoulder blades stay together, working on keeping our upper body straight and just folding forward. Have in mind your heels are always pressing down, so they're pretty much in nice contact with the floor. You can bring your elbows down. Or still start straightening, lengthening. Your toes always looking to you. Two. One. Inhale, come back up. Your right arm goes below your left leg. Take a deep inhale, open up and exhale, fold over. So you might want to grab your foot, but if that um, conditions your posture to close your chest, Stay high with your arm and try to keep your both shoulders in line. So you want to still look to the ceiling. Your arm shouldn't cover, cover your perspective. Since there were some technical problems, uh, there will be a new image just for a, a, a sort of minutes uh, where I am recording my video in live from a phone. But don't worry, it's going to take just two minutes and we are back on the original video, okay? Hang in there. So your right shoulder comes to lie maybe more and more on your foot, on your leg. Two. If you're really flexible and want to go deeper, you can bring your right arm as well to that foot and look higher up. Two. One. Slowly release, but stay down 
we're just twisting over, passing the center, and slowly lie on our left leg, bring that left arm below our right leg, and straighten. Keep that connection with both buttocks on your floor. So this is the way where we really invite space in between our ribs. Two, one, slowly forward. Now I invite you to do any variation that you like to do here to feel a little bit more um, entering. Either both hands close to your feet, coming lower, both hands forward. You can even make a bind in your back and work more on shoulders. Two. One. In and come back up. Super nice. And now, since it's um, we're doing pretty much a mix today of power rocket and flexibility rocket, <laughs> we have initiated the Mula Banda checks. So if you know them, go for it. We're starting with our right leg. So we're trying to focus our entire upper body towards the right leg. Both hands on, on the floor. Always trying to have them behind, below your shoulders. Take a deep inhale here. First straighten, lengthen to get that space. And exhale, fold over. And from here, take all the power you have. Push your navel in and push down to the floor. Maybe to get your buttocks off the floor. Maybe to even get rid of your heels on the floor. And maybe by bending your elbows, shift into your Kundinyasana. If you're here, you can try any variations to go anywhere. For example, Bakasana. <laughs> or if you want to go, just directly back sitting. <laughs> Some furniture might suffer, but that's okay. <laughs> and from here, we focus on the other side. So just to make a short um, recap, it's either pressing up for now, that's perfect. If you want to get rid of your heels, try to keep your feet flex, okay? Because this will avoid you from having cramps. And if you go and have all of it on in the air, try to flex your elbows back, okay? This is the movement. You want to go back in order to shift your chin forward. Let's do it. Inhale here. Exhale, fold over. And get it all, all the power, and try to push back. <laughs> So each of you is using his or her variation. You don't have to go until the end, because just practice is our goal. <laughs> Super. So here we are, let's bring our feet together. Do some butterflies, and get again our line, our concentration in breathing, in posture. Two. So keep slightly leaning back, so you feel that whole pressure in your sitting bones, okay? That allows you also to, after, expand on top. If there's something you can push in, finding the line, you can grow in it. And from here, trying to opening up a little bit more your feet by pressing down your knees. Inhale deeply to straighten, shoulder blades go backwards and with a very extended chin come forward. You can help yourself by pushing down your legs a little bit more with your elbows. Two. One. Take an inhale. Let's come all the way up. And in your next exhalation, just the opposite. We want to expand our back as much as we can by rolling down. Start with your chin, exhale. Like a snail, fall with your forehead into your feet. Feel your shoulder blades now falling, opening, as if your shoulders, they want to come together in front of you. Two. One. Inhale, roll up. Make a really nice rolling up, so you feel that extension in your, in your neck. Grab your big toes. So we are... We don't have a mat behind us, most, most probably most of you have a, back, a wall behind you. <laughs> so we are staying in that um, variation to open your legs. So this is a tricky part, because all of us, we start hanging down, which rounds our back. So try to find your sitting bones again. And this is the very point where you feel you might fall over. 
but if you stay on your sitting bones you won't. So engage your back, straightening through your legs. If you are the lucky ones who have two belts, use them for your feet. And stay here, three, two, one. Maybe we release, stay up here, three, two, one. Both hands go down and maybe you shift your weight to come standing. <laughs> and if not, you can still always do it manually. It's the same direction we go, all of us. Super. Come up all the way and exhale Samastiti in front of the mat. I promise we are reaching the floor now. Take another deep inhale. We are doing our last sun salute. Inhale, come up. Feel all that space you created in you. Exhale, lower down. Inhale, open up forward. Exhale, step or jump. Chaturanga. Inhale, roll up. Last thing that goes up is your chin. Exhale, Adho Mukha. <clears throat> and what we're doing now, a little bit more of arching. Push up your heels by your next inhalation and try to feel that wave coming up to your upper back. Keep it really strong, pushing in the floor and we lower down. Four, five, keep your upper back engaged. Three, <laughs> I'm counting really, really bad. One, and go down. Four, five, three, that's the yoga. Yoga count. <laughs> okay, so from everywhere we are, um, bring your palms next to your body. Okay, feet together and prepare for opening your chest in your next inhalation. Shalavasana. Feet together, engage. Three, feel your lower back. Two, feel it, feel it, feel it. One, exhale, interlace your fingers and interlace your legs. Open up a little more. Three, two, one. Last one, Superman. Bring your hands forward and look to the floor. Open up a little bit more. Three, you are a superhero, your very own superhero. Two, engage a little more. One, exhale, both hands next to your ribs. Take an inhale, open up. Shoulder blades together and exhale. Adho Mukha. Super. Very nice. Take another deep inhale to lift your heels and land with your knees. So it's always, we just don't go down. We try to feel it in our vertebras to wake them up. So we're really shifting and then go down, okay? So here we are, working on opening a little more. First of all, our hands close to the sacrum, but it's not to support us, it's about growing. We want to really grow. Shoulder blades together. Three, two, engage your breathing. Each time you inhale there is a thread pulling you up and in each exhalation you're opening more but you're not falling back. Try on really expanding here. One, super nice. And from here go back to neutral. There are different ways now to find um, a more intense way of practicing it. So you can either keep your heels high and find the heels to work a little more on Ustrasana. You can also bring your wrists down and start looking for your knee gaps. Okay, so it's about keeping your back straight and working on that flex, strengthening that area in your legs. Come down and low and high maybe three times and if not just stay there opening a little more you choose two one in your next exhalation both hands down find a short balasana open your knees maybe make um like a triangle shape with your with your index finger and thumb and relax your front your forehead just upon it so your elbows are spread sideways, relax, <laughs> good, just stay in here and come back to activate your posture, both hands come forward, for all of you it's free if you want to come directly into your chaturanga or shift your weight 
into an Adho Mukha directly. So another time we're going into a really nice <coughs> wave shape in your next inhale. Your back is high. Three. Stay here. Two. Push into the floor. One. And exhale. Just bending your elbows back. Keep it. Keep it. Five. Now I'm counting well. Four. Three. Stay high. Two. One. Very, very good. <laughs> So now it's the moment for Danurasana. We're grabbing our wrists. And now it's all about engaging your legs. So you don't want to help with your chest pushing up. Let your chest be pulled by your legs, okay? In your next inhalation, as if you want to straighten them, straighten your legs and feel the tension. Three, two, one. I'm going to show you a nice variation here. Keep your feet in flex. We shift over the right side here. Maybe you stay here, or maybe you want to find Setu Bandasana here. Inhale, open, and exhale. Find your knee down. Prepare for your next inhale. Open, exhale, roll over the other side. Either stay here or roll over. I'm limited by my wall right now. <laughs> so you open here. Exhale, lower down. The knee is always controlling not to be falling. Take an inhale. Really engage, engage, engage. Lose your legs. Stay here. Three, two, one. Exhale. Open your knees. Hands are next to your wrists. And find your forehead dropping back. So it wants to find itself with the middle feet. Exhale. Both. Just shift your weight backwards and straighten your arms forward. With both hands now, just on your shoulder blades and your elbows far away from you in front, relax your forehead and just feel your breathing. So here it's all about the hip to let it sink deeper. Very nice. And from here you come back up, little by little. It's literally just to find another Mukta Hasta Shirshasana here. Uh, if you're not comfortable with that, you can come back to train a bakasana, okay? So if you have any neck issues, just train to be away from the floor. If not, you can go classic, bringing your head down, forming a triangle shape, and coming first maybe up to your elbows. Maybe you stay here for today. Or if that is already easy, knees together and stay engaged with your back. At last you can bring your legs up. If it's all too easy, you can go straight, uh, straight upon with your legs straight. Maybe give yourself five breathings here. Find line. Find the neck really nicely extended. And if you're in Bakasana, maybe repeat two times here. And all of you who are up on Mukta Hasta, find your way back to Bakasana. Stay here for two breathings maybe. And even you might catch a jump back into your vinyasa, Adho Mukha. Mm -hmm. So in Adho Mukha, take that moment to reconnect with that posture. Feel some changes that happened since the beginning. Feel how probably your heels are getting lower to the floor. How you're engaging more your legs. And how it feels easier now to straighten extending through your spine. Two, one, in your next inhalation, right leg goes back up. First of all, let's bend that knee and open through our right hip a little more. Keep pushing back in your Adho Mukha. Mm -hmm. So if you know that your variations here, you can do them, but it's just a moment where we stay here. In your next inhalation, bring your leg back up and exhale. Shift it in between your hands to come to sit. 
Okay. And your next inhalation, come high and exhale far away from you. Lengthening your spine again. So we want to work on keeping cl to cl um, keeping closing, keep closing your left hip, squaring it. Okay. So if you want to feel that a little bit more intense, just walk your hands a little bit more over the right side, but still keep laying down upon your leg. Slowly come back to center. It's your choice if you want to stay here a little more. Or if you want to come, come up, look for your leg behind with your left arm. A simple option would be that you can always support yourself. A little bit more intense, slide your foot to your elbow. And even more intense than that, make that bind and shift your entire upper body in front so you're squared. If that is still too easy, there's a, um, a variation I really enjoy. It's about grabbing a bind with that leg to this bent and the other one shift it over to find your complete version. So there are so many ways of feeling your posture, creating it for yourself. Just don't push yourself too much, you just still have to enjoy it and slowly release. We bring that back leg in front to cross over and bring your both knees together. Gomukasana, cow face. <laughs> Why ever that posture is called like that. <laughs> so various options. If you did the other class with me, you already know. You can either bring your hands just on top of your feet. Especially it's all about lengthening again and coming far forward. So your chin doesn't want to have any connection with your knee. You can grab your elbows or even apply right arm onto the top. Make a bind on the back and fold. Two, one, inhale, come back up, exhale, release. Let's all, and that's the, the funny part, if we all find our way back. Let's twist over our right side, just fingertips. So the idea is that our metatarsus, if it's called like that in English, <laughs> stays on the floor. You never, you, you don't do any steps, just shift, shift, shift and twist you're making a 360 degree twist and come back to sitting. You will see, you will find the same way back. But that's not all yet, okay? So we bring that back leg back again, both hands on the floor. And in your next inhalation, prepare to shift that left leg back up and exhale, open that hip. Again, repeat variations if you did it in the other side. Stay grounded and focused on your downward facing, pushing the right heel to the floor. In your next inhale, lengthening and exhale, shift. Use that uh, wave shape in your back before coming to sit. Feel your vertebras alive. Super. Inhale, open and exhale, walk far forward from you. Two. One. If you did it in the other side, Walk over the left side now, but keep that hip squared, especially the right one. Inhale, walk back to center. Slowly come up. Find your variation, either by just looking for the back wrist, supporting yourself, shifting, finding a bind, always staying in one line, or even finding with that upper arm your foot on the floor and twisting. Two. One, slowly release and come forward. Come to fit all knees, all of them. <laughs> Find your variation, tum, tum, or left hand comes up, inhale, open and exhale, fold over. Your chin doesn't meet your, um, your knee, just stay there, keep lengthening. Two, one, inhale, come up. And from here we shift our weight back, open our legs. 
and find ourselves in Navasana. A little bit more of strengthening here. Try to have really straight back. Three, open your chest. Two, you can always apply half version if it's too hard for your lower back. One, exhale, bend your knees, cross them. Inhale, push up, maybe it's just the buttocks or even entire body. Exhale, come to sit. Inhale once more. Three, two, one, exhale. One more time, push up, take a deep inhale, exhale, come to sit and come up. Three, two, one, exhale. Bend your knees, come into your chaturanga. You can again push up first and shift that weight into your chaturanga. You can always um, decide to do it more manually. Find your way into your adhamuga. We come to sit, stepping or jumping. And lay down. Oh. <laughs> So from here we're going into nice Setu Vandasana. Since we already did one and our back is pretty nicely prepared, you can choose to go directly into your Danurasana. If for today you choose not to go there, since it's pretty intense for the, for the back, you can just stay in the preparative position, which would be that. And if not, I invite you to go with me for five breathings, push up, working a little more on your shoulders, four, Three, two, one, slowly bind down and grab your knees. Give yourself a nice massage from the right to left side, maybe some small circles even. So the idea is that you have your entire back flat on the floor, give it some weight if it's easier. Open your knees a little more and push them down with the help of your elbows, bending deeper. Two. One. We go a little deeper even with a happy baby so your elbows are inside of your knees and grab the outside parts of your feet. So you actually want to push your, your shins vertically, vertically down. So you don't want to be like this and not too open. Just push them down as if they were hmm, legs of a chair. <laughs> so by pushing down, feel how you re-engage your shoulder blades with the floor and your entire back is even flatter on the floor. Two. One. So it's another very last tricky part. I enjoy it so much, so I want to, to share it with all rocket people. From here, it's the same position, but instead of looking for the outside part of your feet, you look for the inside part of your heels, okay? So it's literally you grab, your fingers are looking outside, and your heels are just in, in the center of your hand, palm, okay? And from here, keep your back straight and start on straightening your legs. So if the lower back doesn't roll up, that's the idea. So you start extending up to the point where you feel, oh, I'm rounding, okay? So if it's not coming up, engage, 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 and your toes, you're pushing them down, maybe to touch the floor. So it's a lot of strength in your arms, actually, to help doing that. Three, two, keep your lower, lower back flat. One, super, exhale, both feet together. Grab your wrists and start some extension here. Two, one, once more we are hugging our knees and this time, I love it so much, bring your back a little rounder and start slowly with rolling back, forward, back, forward. You can even use your chin more tucked so you feel each vertebra getting its attention now, a small mini massage. The idea is that it's not falling, it's not an inertia. You can stop anywhere, okay? You can just go further. And maybe you find short balance over your shoulder blades. Roll back. Find some balance here. Roll back. Find balance. Roll back. 
and even without any jumping stand up exhale come down find balance roll back we're doing it once more take an inhale extend exhale roll back find balance and if you have it this time support your back and come into your salamba sarvangasana So this is, this is the very moment when you start focusing completely on your breathing, on your rhythm. So you find your alignment in your body, toes, heels are just on top of your, of your knees, knees are on top of your hips and shoulders are just below. You're extending each exhalation again each inhalation as well and feel if it, that position would be already an initiating meditation. If you have any variations here you would like to apply and you're aware of them, knowing them well, you can do it. Maybe finding more concentration and balance through a lotus or through bringing your foot palms together and bending your knees sideways. So your balance should be especially on top of your shoulders and shoulder blades, not too much on your, on your neck. If that's the case, just come back to support it. Salamba Sarvangasana. If you're in lotus, slowly start hugging your lotus. If you may be applied, bringing your feet together Bring your, feet, your knees together this time and bring them on your forehead. So there's a lot of weight right now coming wherever you come from. And if you were unsupported, the same. Just bring your knees down to really press on top of your forehead. Both hands come down as if they were like some breaks. So you come back, this time just rolling down it's the last very moment when you can really feel how much space you have in your spinal cord, how separated each vertebra is, and find and feel how each single vertebra is getting to lie on the mat with its own connection. If you're here, it's a perfect, perfect preparation for handstanders. If you feel that your lower back is super engaged and connected and it's not lifting, Use your hands if you want, that's the medium version. <laughs> if you want a very difficult one, you can bring your hands on top of your head. Keep the legs straight and start really slowly. Actually, the rhythm is your choice. The slower, the, the more difficult it is. And come down. So your belly pushes down and up in order to avoid that your lower back is lifting. Take all the time and if it starts shivering, that's what we want to feel now. Three, two, keep pushing down your entire back. One, and find the floor. The last five centimeters are the hardest one. <sighs> now we flex um, the right foot on top of the left. Just give it some release by pushing that knee down. Your right arm is spread out. Twist your head over to look at that arm. Find some breathings. If you prefer, you can also find a bind, a second bind with that arm and the other foot. But the idea would be that your shoulder blades still touch the floor, both of them. So your upper back is neutral and the, to the, the rotation just happens in the center of your back. Inhale, come back center. Straightening out, exhale, twist over, and enter. Inhale, come back. It's a very personal way to finish now. So you can start shifting, shifting, to find your way back to sitting. You can choose to come directly to lie in Shavasana. You can also find for now a sitting posture, closing your eyes and already getting into the final um, practice. 
or if you want to do any more movements, I really, really bring it to your heart. If you feel there's some power left or some inspiration to do something, it would be a very good moment to do sheer shasana headstand. Maybe keep it for five breathings or even handstands. If you have a wall, just do it. If you feel comfortable to try it a little bit on your own or repeat whatever you have connected with a lot this practice, you can do it. Whatever helps you to now root down, maybe get a last cleanse of, of power and adrenaline to after just release it on the floor. So take your own time and whenever you reach the moment to touch floor with your entire body, Shavasana, separate your feet, your legs, hip width apart, open your hands, palms looking up. Feel how your lower back is connecting, how your hands are opening, how your shoulder blades are neutrally relaxed on the floor. Take deep three inhales through your nose. Open up that space in your lungs and exhale through your mouth. One more time. In your last time, give it all. Give it all the space when you inhale, as if you want to give all kind of gifts to yourself. And in your exhalation, really powerful, exhale and release whatever you don't need anymore in your body old energies, thoughts, a lot of wind in your mind, tensions, whatever it is. Closing your eyes and finding a deep connection with your most personal feelings, physical feelings. But there is no engagement, no control anymore. In Shavasana, the very most focused exercise is not to have any control of your body. Just feel and observe how your heart is beating, your pulse, your bloodstream. Even your breathing rhythm, but you don't want to find any control of it.
your eyes closed. Take your time to find back into your body, the way into feeling your physical shapes, your fingers, your toes, your shoulders, your neck. And especially reconnect with all the space you've created within you by taking deep inhales. And find your own personal way slowly to come back to sit. Legs crossed, hands on top of your knees. Your shoulders are relaxed, staring down. Feel grateful for the time dedicated for having reconnected with yourself. Bring your palms together in the center of your chest. Take a deep last inhale through your, through your nose. And exhale, incline your head, relax your shoulder blades. Feel humble. And let's send peace and love out to that world. Namaste.